Surveillance Surveillance is the ongoing, systematic collection, analysis and interpretation of health data essential to the planning, implementation and evaluation of public health practice, closely integrated with the timely dissemination of the data to those who need to know. It is the responsibility of infection control team to decide the time, type and methods of surveillance, collection of appropriate specimens, analyze the data and plan evidence-based interventions with the infection control committee and representatives. Surveillance is usually classified as active surveillance. Proactive surveillance undertaken by the hospital infection control team. Passive surveillance reporting by individuals such as lab personnel, by medical records or reported by physicians. Targeted surveillance directed towards a particular site or place or situation. For example, 1. Site-oriented surveillance Priorities will be to monitor frequent infections with significant impact in mortality, morbidity, cost and which may be avoidable. Common priority sites are primary bloodstream infections, surgical site infections, infection with multidrug resistant bacteria such as in outbreak situation. 2. Unit oriented surveillance where efforts are focused on high-risk units such as ICUs, OTs, post-operative wards, etc. These high-risk areas contain immunocompromised individuals and thus need specific intervention for surveillance. 3. Priority-oriented surveillance is the surveillance which is undertaken for a specific issue of concern to the facility, for example, UTI in patients, urinary catheters in long-term care facilities. 4. Alert organism surveillance It is the continuous monitoring of the incidence of specific organisms by the microbiology laboratory, for example, MRSA, VRE, emerging or re-emerging of pathogens. 5. Alert condition surveillance Monitoring the incidence of specific clinical conditions such as infectious diarrhea or tuberculosis or dengue is known as alert condition surveillance. So every hospital should have an infection control committee and infection control team to do the surveillance of the hospital acquired infection in the hospital. This data is collected from the hospital and it is analyzed and feedback is given to the concerned physician so that a proper action can be taken to reduce the chances of infection in their respective wards. Methods of surveillance Prevalence or transverse or cross-sectional study It is the number of cases in healthcare associated infections in a defined patient population either during specified period of time that is period prevalence or at the specified point in time that is point prevalence. Advantage It is simple, easy and fast. It is also relatively inexpensive and useful when initiating surveillance program to access current issue. The disadvantages are influenced by duration of patient's stay and duration of infection and it includes all infected patients, old and new, which may lead to an overestimation of cases. Incidence, that is, longitudinal or continuous. It is the number of new cases, healthcare-associated infections, that occur in defined population during a specified time period. Advantages are more effective in de detecting difference in infection rates, to follow trends, to link infection to the risk factor, useful in inter-hospital and inter-unit comparison. The disadvantages are more labor-intensive, time-consuming and costly and therefore usually undertaken for selected high-risk units. Methods of Surveillance Active surveillance may be carried out daily by infection control nurses as directed by and under the supervision of the infection control officer. Appropriate and relevant data is collected by infection control nurses 
from clinical wards and microbiology lab. There are various ways of collecting data. For example, clinical visits, which are required in unit-oriented surveillance in various vulnerable areas like ICU, NNU, nursery, pediatric surgery, post-operative wards, etc. We are doing surveillance of HAI in vulnerable areas such as nursery, gynae wing, MICU, ICU, pediatric ICU in any ward. We collect the data from there on daily basis and on monthly basis. Infection control team must visit these areas and look for clues such as record of fever or other clinical signs consistent with infection, antimicrobial therapy, laboratory tests, review of medical charts. The medical records, microbiology reports and meeting with clinicians can also reveal possibility of healthcare-associated infections. Once a hospital-associated infection case is identified, relevant data should be filled in a proforma designed by the infection control team in consensus with other members of the infection control committee. Relevant samples are collected and processed in the hospital infection control laboratory, usually part of the microbiology laboratory. The standard operating procedures for this work should be clearly laid out along with roles and responsibilities of the concerned staff. The specimens should be reported as per standard protocols and reported at the earliest because a delay may lead to spread of infection and may involve a bigger population. The reports of investigations are communicated to the concerned unit in charge or doctor and presented before Infection Control Committee. The healthcare-associated infection is diagnosed using standard definitions, using clinical history, day of admission, day of procedure undertaken, hospital area and staff involved, investigations done and specimen microbiology report. This is an example of a sample performer of hospital-associated infection surveillance. It should include the following. The basic details, such as the serial number, ward, DOA, the name of the patient, age of the patient, and registration number. The second is the diagnosis, at the admission, post-admission, days after admission, site of infection, organism, antibiotic sensitivity pattern. The performer should also mention the antibiotic given, which is therapeutic or prophylactic, the risk factors, the dates, and the duration of each. Definition of healthcare associated infection with clinical criteria Urinary tract infection consists of fever, frequency, urgency, dysuria, pyuria more than equal to 3 WBCs per high power field of urine, gram stain, the organisms are seen, urine culture is positive, that is more than equal to 10 to the power 5 organisms per ml, diagnosis by physician and treatment started, and history of catheterization within 7 days of urinary tract infection, surgical site infection, Signs and symptoms of pain, tenderness, swelling, fever, abscess, purulent discharge, gram stain and culture positive, infection occurring within 30 days of operative procedure, diagnosed by operating surgeon and treatment started. For pneumonia definition, the signs and symptoms of fever, cuff with sputum, Wheeze, ronchi, crepts. Physical examination suggestive of pneumonia. Purulent sputum. Culture is positive in sputum or bronchial aspirate or brushings or biopsy. 
blood culture positive, radiological evidence of consolidation, or significant rise in IgM and IgG antibodies. Bloodstream infections, signs and symptoms of fever, chills, hypotension, in infants hypothermia and bradycardia, blood culture positive, positive antigen antibody test on blood, apparent infection at another site and diagnosed by physician and treatment started for sepsis. Gastroenteritis Acute onset of diarrhea with or without vomiting and fever. Enteric pathogen is isolated from stool. Enteric pathogen is detected by antibody or antigen assay on blood or feces. Let us look at an example of alert condition surveillance. This should include month, BSI, UTI, nosocomial pneumonia, SSI, diarrhea, others, total prevalence rate. Hospital infection control policy may guide which areas to be chosen for incident studies. Point prevalence study. Infection control team must visit all the vulnerable and high-risk areas like ICUs, post-operative wards, at least once a week and examine the case sheets of all the patients in detail. This will ensure in capturing maximum data. Prevalence rate is calculated by number of patients who have acquired infection divided by total number of patients present at the time of survey. An example of point prevalence study undertaken in a tertiary care hospital is shown. This includes date, neonatal ward, ICU-1, date, ICU-2, post-operative ward, OBS and gyne. Incident study. The infection control team must visit high-risk areas daily, must collect data regarding hospital-acquired infections, cases and maintain record of all cases of possible healthcare-associated infections. The infection control nurse must prepare line listing and graphs of these cases every month and calculate the attack rate and incidence rate. Here's an example of line listing for a month. The columns include the serial number, identification on data, the diagnosis, risk factor, clinical symptoms, investigations, antibiotics, date of discharge, graphical representation of surveillance activity, the incident study. Calculation of prevalence and incidence rates. For prevalence rate, it is calculated as number of infected patients at this time of study divided by number of patients observed at the same time multiplied by 100. The examples are prevalence of nosocomial infections for 100 hospitalized patients or prevalence of UTI for 100 hospitalized patients. Or the prevalence rate can be calculated as the number of infected patients at the time of the study divided by number of patients exposed at the same time multiplied by 100. For example, prevalence of UTI for 100 patients with a urinary catheter. To calculate attack rate, also known as cumulative incidence rate, number of new infections acquired in a period divided by number of patients observed in the same period multiplied by 100. For example, attack rate of UTI for 100 hospitalized patients. Or attack rate can also be calculated as number of new infections acquired in a period divided by number of patients exposed in the same period multiplied by 100. For example, attack rate of the SSI for 100 operated patients. Incidence rate can be calculated as the number of new nosocomial infections acquired in a period divided by total number of patient days for the same period multiplied by 1000. For example, incidence of bloodstream infection for 1000 patient days. Incidence rate can also be calculated as number of new device associated nosocomial infections in a period divided by total device days 
for the same period multiplied by 1000. For example, incidence of ventilator associated pneumonia for 1000 ventilation days. Laboratory surveillance. Infection control nurse must check the reports of culture isolates and antibiogram of specimens received from various vulnerable and high-risk areas in the microbiology laboratory daily. These cases should be followed up and data should be collected from the patient's medical chart and treating doctors to find out whether these are hospital-acquired infections. Infection control nurse must maintain the records of such cases and submit report to infection control officer on a periodic basis as decided by the infection control committee. Here's an example of comparing antibiotic resistant pattern of gram positive cocci for two months. Here's an example comparing the antibiotic resistant pattern of gram negative bacteria in two months. Investigation of an outbreak. Step one. Recognition of the outbreak. Is there an increase in the number of cases of particular infection or rise in the prevalence of an organism? Hospital infection control team should visit the site and begin preliminary investigations by developing a case definition, identifying the site, pathogen and affected population. After determining the magnitude of the problem, immediate control measures are required. General control measures such as isolation of infected cases, strict hand washing, strengthening of sterilization and disinfection, and asepsis should be advised at the earliest. Confirmation of an outbreak should be done by comparing the present rate of occurrence with the endemic rate. Step 2. The appropriate department and personnel and the hospital administration should be notified and involved. Step 3. Line listing for every case Patient's details, place and time of occurrence and infection details should be developed. On the basis of information and date, the suspected causes of outbreak should be formulated. And relevant microbiological investigations should be carried out to find out the source of infection. Step 4. Specific control measures should be advised as soon as the cause of outbreak is identified. Monitoring for further cases and effectiveness of control measures should be done. A report should be prepared for presentation to the Infection Control Committee, departments involved in the outbreak and administration. Describing the outbreak. The detailed description includes the person or the persons, place and time, date of admission, gender, age, etc. An epidemic curve may be plotted, which is the graphic representation of the distribution of cases by time of onset. It should distinguish between definite and probable cases. The shape of the epidemic curve may suggest a single point source, ongoing transmission, or an intermittent source. Control measures and follow-up. The aims are to control the current outbreak by interrupting the chain of transmission to prevent the future occurrence of similar outbreak. Immediate control measures for outbreak management. Type of transmission suspected. Cross transmission, which is the transmission between individuals. Suggested action. Patient isolation and barrier precautions determined by infectious agent or agents. Hand transmission. Suggested action. Improvements in hand washing. Airborne agent. Suggested action. Patient isolation with appropriate ventilation. Agent present in water, waterborne agent. Suggested action, checking of water supply and all liquid containers, use of disposable devices. Foodborne agent, elimination of the food at risk. Measures for prevention of hospital acquired infections. Infection, urinary tract infections. Proven effective, limit duration of catheter, aseptic technique at insertion, maintain closed drainage. Infection, surgical site infections, proven effective, surgical technique, clean operating environment, staff attire, limiting preoperative hospital stay, preoperative shower and local skin preparation of the patient, optimal antibiotic prophylaxis, aseptic practice in operating room, 
सर्जिकल वूंड सर्वेलेंस इन्फेक्शन निमोनिया प्रूवन इफेक्टिव वेंटिलेटर एसोसिएटेड एसेप्टिक इंट्यूबेशन एंड सक्शनिंग लिमिट ड्यूरेशन नॉन इन्वेसिव वेंटिलेशन इन्फ्लुएंजा वैक्सीनेशन फॉर स्टाफ आइसोलेशन पॉलिसी स्टेराइल वाटर फॉर ऑक्सीजन एंड एरोसोल थेरेपी प्रिवेंशन ऑफ लीजनेला एस्पर्जिलस इन्फेक्शन ड्यूरिंग रेनोवेशन एंड कंस्ट्रक्शन एक्टिविटीज प्रूवन नॉट इफेक्टिव डाइजेस्टिव डी कंटामिनेशन फॉर ऑल पेशेंट्स चेंजेस ऑफ वेंटिलेटर सर्किट एवरी फोर्टी एट और सेवेंटी टू आवर्स वैस्क्यूलर डिवाइस इन्फेक्शन प्रूवन इफेक्टिव ऑल कैथीटर्स क्लोज सिस्टम लिमिट ड्यूरेशन लोकल स्किन प्रेपरेशन एसेप्टिक टेक्निक एट इंसेशन रिमूवल इफ इन्फेक्शन सस्पेक्टेड सेंट्रल लाइन्स सर्जिकल एसेप्सिस फॉर इंसर्शन लिमिटेशन ऑफ फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ ड्रेसिंग चेंज एंटीबायोटिक कोटेड कैथीटर फॉर शॉर्ट टर्म प्रूवन नॉट इफेक्टिव एंटी माइक्रोबियल क्रीम्स फॉर स्किन प्रेपरेशन बेनिफिट्स ऑफ सर्वेलेंस मेशर द क्वालिटी ऑफ पेशेंट केयर एंड सेफ्टी मॉनिटरिंग ट्रेंड्स ऑफ हेल्थ केयर एसोसिएटेड इन्फेक्शंस मॉनिटरिंग प्रिवेंटिव एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ हॉस्पिटल इन्फेक्शन कंट्रोल प्रोग्राम एली डिटेक्शन of any impending outbreak rational usage of antimicrobials reducing resistance development and cost monitoring and controlling of emerging resistance and changing flora to improve awareness of clinical staff and other healthcare workers there is no benefit more than saving lives